Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Makes. In my last video, I showed my design for Joel's speaker cover design contest. Check out that video here if you haven't seen it yet. I go over some really powerful Fusion 360 techniques there. So in coming up with a design for that contest, I wanted to really show the power of 3D printing. 3D printers allow you to manufacture complex shapes that would otherwise be impossible to manufacture with other techniques such as uh, laser cutting, um, CNC machining, and, and other manufacturing methods. I also wanted to flex a little Fusion 360 muscle and show you how simple it can be to design some very complex shapes. Combining these two requirements together, I came up with this design. It's a flowy, curvy, twisty model for a speaker cover that I came up with. I'm very happy with the design, but now comes the real test. Can I 3D print this? Well, there's only one way to find out. After designing the model, I sent it to Simplify 3D to Slice. Um, going with Simplify 3D here, um, even though I'll be sending this to my Prusa for printing, because I really like Simplify support generation approach. They make it really easy to add and modify supports. And I've always found that their supports come off really easy without having to go in with a hammer and chisel. Now, to be fair, I haven't done a recent comparison with other slicers such as Prusa slicers or Cura, as I know there's been quite a few updates since the last time I you know, gave their support generation a fair try. Maybe a topic for a future video. I just know that Simplify 3D never disappoints with supports, so it's been my go-to slicer whenever I need to 3D print supports. Also, the slicing techniques I'll be discussing are available in every available slicer out there. So even though I'll be demonstrating Simplify 3D, you can use any other slicer. Now, generally, I try to design my way out of needing supports, but there are cases where you're just going to need them. And this is one of those scenarios. All right, here's my completed design here. So let's go ahead and 3D print this. To do that, we'll go up here in our toolbar to Tools and then Make 3D Print. And Fusion allows you to send this directly to your slicer of choice without having to export the STL and then bringing it back in. So it's a nice little convenience. And you can see here that I can choose my slicer here under Print Utility. Uh, you have the option to choose whichever one you want. It comes with some built-in ones. Um, you know, as long as you have these installed, like Cura, it'll go ahead and open it right up with your model in there. But you have the option of choosing custom and then navigating uh, by clicking in this little folder and choosing which application you want to use. So I have that already set up as Simplify 3D. So I'll simply select the model here and then click OK. And Simplify 3D will open up with my model in here. So here's how it's going to look on the build plate. So let's go ahead and set this up for 3D printing. I'll double click on process one here. And a couple things I'll do here. First, I'll select the profile here, which is select your printer. I'm gonna go with my Prusa, so I'll select that. I'm printing with PLA resolution here. I'm gonna go with medium, which will set it to 0.2 millimeter layer height. And I can set my infill. Now you have, of course, a lot more choices here if you click on that advanced tab. But I can verify here that that layer height is 0.2 millimeters um, by just looking at it here. And I can also change it here. But okay, I don't want to go into the depths of uh, Simplify 3D's options here because there's a lot to cover. Main thing I want to talk about is generating supports. So you can see here you have an option here to generate support. I can check it, click OK. And then I can click on this little um, icon here. This is a support icon. It'll come up with some just default support options. You can see the main thing here is you get to choose that angle. So it's set to default 45 degrees and that's 45 degrees, let's say from the vertical to an angle um, to be 45 degrees. And you can change that where you want it to generate support. So let's try that. I'm simply gonna click on generate automatic supports, click done and you can see here how it uh, automatically places supports on the bottom here. Now you have the option to change the settings on these supports, um, but we're just gonna leave it as is now. And you can see all these supports. Now when I first printed this, I thought, you know what, I think my printer can get away with uh, 65 degrees instead of 45. So what that means is here, that max overhang, 
I went ahead and changed that to 65. And you can see here, if you keep an eye on the supports, if I go ahead and click on Generate Automatic Supports again, you'll see how it removed a bunch of them. And so I said, okay, I, let me try that. And you can also have the option here, if you click on Add New Support Structure, you can go under here and actually add some, you know, place supports where you think you might need them. And you can also remove existing supports by clicking on this button and then taking them away. Um, so my first attempt was just to go with that 65 degree option and see what happens. And then so I went ahead and uh, click prepare to print and this will go ahead and slice it. And then you'll have your uh, simulation here that you can go through. So if I drag this little slider back, I can hit play. And you can see that really nice simulation here that I always enjoyed with Simplify 3D. Um, so it shows it being printed and you can even bring this back and just kind of go layer by layer. And you can see here it's starting with these little supports. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna send this to my printer and see how this comes out, see if it'll, uh, if it'll actually work. After several layers in, I check in on the print and you could see here, I'm starting to see some, some signs of trouble. <laughs> some of these supports are just actually not sticking on the build plate. And uh, I can tell that's an early sign of trouble to come. And so I let this run a little bit longer and then the situation just turns from bad to worse. Uh, because the support structures aren't sticking, they begin to fall off and then they also knock down other support structures. And then this results in the printer just starting to print in thin air now and then you begin to get that spaghetti effect where you're just getting filament all over the place. So eventually I had to uh, shut down this operation. It's clear that this is not going to work. So we're gonna have to go back to the slicer and tweak a few things. Okay, we're back here at Simplify 3D and we're in the simulation view mode. So I'm going to take this slider and drag it all the way back to the beginning so we can see exactly what is going on here. Now, at that first layer, we kind of begin to get an idea of why we're having trouble. You see when it starts to print the supports, these are very thin structures on the build plate. So there's not much to really hold them down. And if I go layer by layer, you can see that they get taller and taller, but they're still very thin. There's not, you know, there's nothing to grab to the build plate. And so they become very unstable and that's why they're falling off. So how can we fix this? So we want to increase uh, or help these uh, support structures here to stick. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to go um, and exit preview mode here. And we're going to go to our uh, process here, process one going to show advanced um, so that gives us our advanced options and under our additions tab we have an option here to use a raft now the raft will be sort of like a bed of filament that'll it'll lay down in order to help your uh, your model stick to the build plate so the default options here is that you get three top raft layers and two base layers and I don't really need that many. So what I'm going to do is bring it down to one. I'm going to go to one uh, top layer and then one base layer. And I'll show you what that does in a second. So I'll click OK. And then we'll go ahead and uh, slice this and take a look at the simulation again. So here now you see what's going on. So if I take that slider again, draw it out, um, you see that that base layer, what it does is it creates this sort of mesh here on the bottom. Uh, on the build plate as that first layer. And then if I go up, because I did one base and one top layer, it's just gonna go ahead and after it does um, that first layer in blue, it's gonna do this top layer. Um, and it does that all around. And then that's when it's gonna begin to uh, start printing. So you see now that these uh, support structures, they're not you know sticking just to the build plate. Now you have that bottom layer of the raft there which uh, acts as like glue to help these thin support structures stick to the build plate. And so I think that's going to solve the problem with these supports just falling off. I'm going to drag this all the way through. And one more issue um, I'm seeing is I just don't think I have enough support structures here. 
um, you can see like like right here I should have something there and there's more areas throughout where I should have supports so I'm thinking I'm gonna change that uh, support angle from 65 bring it down to 45 degrees so that default angle and that's gonna uh, make this more likely to succeed so I'll click on exit preview here and I'm gonna click on the support option here and I'm gonna it defaults to 45 degrees already so all I have to do is click generate automatic supports and watch the model here You'll see how it's gonna um, place a lot more support so once I click on generate automatic supports you see I get a lot more supports added now I can also go back in and manually add some more but I think this should do the trick so let's slice that one more time and look at that preview and we can see here we we have our sort of our, our raft base layer and then we get that raft top layer we get our support structures and there's a lot more of them to help hold up this model so okay let's now give this a try and see if this fixes our problem here's what that first base layer of the raft looks like you can see here that the nozzle moves really slow and deposits this sort of thick layer of filament and then comes in with that top base layer which fills in on those lines this sets a nice foundation where it can now come and start printing the support structures and it's hard to see here but you can begin to see the first layers of the supports being built and as I let the print go on a little longer these support structures are looking a lot more stable you know they're not falling off and we can begin to see that the model is being held in place and it's, it's being supported quite well. So as this continues, I begin to get more and more excited because it looks like we are going to get a successful print just in our second try here. And we do, everything holds and we have success. Now comes the fun part of removing the support structures. I'm just gonna let this part speak for itself. After a little further cleanup, here are the results. As you saw in the video, it was fairly easy removing the supports. And even in some cases, I didn't really need the pliers. I actually could have just gone in there and just ripped it off with my hands. Now, the brim did stick a little more, and that required coming in with the pliers and, and pulling that off. But even so, it wasn't too bad. You can see here I have the underside, and I can come in with a file or sandpaper and clean that up a little more. And I could even get better results there by going with a 0.1 millimeter layer height, for example, instead of a 0. 0.2 but I gotta say I'm happy with the results all right if you have any questions on my approach leave it in the comments below I'm also curious to know what is your slicer of choice is there one slicer that you always go to or do you have uh, different slicers uh, depending on what exactly you're doing um, so leave that in the comments below and if you're looking to get started with fusion 360 to be able to create your own designs and 3d print them check out my quick start mini series i've got a link down below it's a series of beginner tutorials that i've created to get you quickly up and running with fusion 360. all right i'll see you soon with my next project